Natural ventilation provides a desired indoor climate, which is essential for a good working environment. The fresh air caused by the process helps people to keep a clear head and enables them to work more efficiently. A bad indoor environment can result in ill health and symptoms such as headaches, leading to a reduced work capacity. The term passive for cooling refers to technologies or design features used to cool buildings without power consumption. Traditional energy consuming mechanical components like pumps and fans are not used. There are two main types of this natural ventilation, the first type being cross ventilation. Cross ventilation is proven to be very effective for ventilating indoor air which can often be more polluted than outdoor air. The concept works by taking advantage of high and low pressure zones created by wind to draw fresh air through a building. Breezes enter through a window or vent causing airflow across the space while the pressure difference on both sides of the building pulls the stale air out of an opening on the other side. The cool exterior air forces the warm interior out of the building through another window. Open windows or vents on opposite sides of the structure are essential for this to work and it is more effective in the summer months given Ireland's mixed climate. The result of this process is passive cooling that reduces the reliance on air conditioning. The process overall ensures a fresh and comfortable indoor climate done with minimal energy consumption and at a low cost, which is a benefit for both the employer and the employees. The use of this type of natural ventilation in office buildings in particular has received much attention in the last decade. Natural ventilation is thought of as a low-cost energy cooling strategy which can provide year-round comfort with flexible user control at a low capital cost and maintenance cost. One way to ventilate a building that is hotter or colder on the inside than outside is to use what is known as the stack effect. Because of the temperature difference, the air inside the building is either more or less dense than the air outside. If there is an opening high in the building and another low in the building, a natural flow will be caused. If the air in the building is warmer than the outside, this warmer air will float out the top opening, being replaced with cooler air from, from outside. If the air inside is cooler than that outside, the cooler air will drain out the low opening, being replaced with warmer air from outside. One common use for stack effect would be nighttime flushing of a building's interior to cool it for the next day. The rate at which air flows depends on several factors including the inside and outside air temperatures, the area of the openings and the height difference between the top and the bottom openings. In our animation we can see that the windows in the roof are being used for letting the used air out while the windows at the lower levels take fresh air into the building. In the animation, the stack effect is combined with wind movement outside the building. The stack effect is still the same, but the windows where air is let in or let out of the building is defined by the wind direction. The ground floor window on the lee side opens wider than on the window on the windward side, while on the top only the window at lee side opens. The stack effect is based upon the requirement of ensuring a fresh and comfortable indoor climate. This is achieved with minimal energy consumption and at a low cost. The main benefits of stack ventilation systems include the flexibility in vent placement, non-reliance on wind patterns, stable airflow and sustainability. The disadvantages of this type of system are lower airflow flow force when compared to wind ventilation, reliance on temperature differentials and design limitations regarding ceiling heights.